Hey everyone, I'm James from Southern Farming Systems and today we're going to look at another iteration of our herbicide matrices at our SFS Inverlee site. Uh, I'll give you an introduction to the trial and then Gina Creek, our operations manager, will take you through the trial itself. Uh, so these trials have been very popular. Um, they illustrate what can go wrong in the paddock and it's way better for that to happen here on a trial plot than, than in the paddock. So all of our herbicide products and the timing of their application have been applied to six crop types. First up we have Wahoo canola, which is a TT canola. We have Samira beans. We have Bendok beans, which are a immutolerant kind of bean. Then we have linseed because they're hard to kill, chickpeas for something different, and vetch because our members requested that we do that last year. Now before we go into looking at what all of these herbicides have done, it's always good to know what the season's been like because that will always have a big impact on how our herbicides behave. So we had a very wet start to the year, particularly in April with a well above average rainfall. And that meant that for our PSPE uh, applications that went in May, they went into really moist conditions and that will probably affect their behavior. After that, we had an unusually dry June and July. And because of that, we think we still would have had moist conditions for our first post-M application. But by the time our second one went out, we might have had a slightly dry topsoil. Our flowering spray hasn't gone out yet, um, but after that rain we've just had in August and September, again, moist conditions. Over winter, we also had a very cold uh, winter with very cold nights, but average temperature overall. Uh, so now I'm gonna take you through the highlights um, that we've got here. Just a bit of housekeeping to start with. Um, if I refer to a, a growth stage, it's gonna be um, in reference to the Faber beans, so it might be three node or five node, for example. Uh, appropriate adjuvants were always used um, in the mixtures when they were needed. We've used select and factor at two post-emergent timings so far, three node and five node. Neither timing has caused an impact on any of the crops, but we can expect to see some from our next timing during flowering. As you can see from the three node timing, there's a bit of a radish patch, which this treatment has absolutely no impact on. Group A's of course rely on contact. Some SFS work a few years ago has shown that a significant increase in clethodem efficacy by changing nozzle type and droplet size. Intercept at 3 node has basically done as expected and killed everything except the immutolerant beans and the vetch. On duty is similar but has been much harsher on the vetch, so the addition of the Mazapik is not favourable in that case. On duty, used later at 5 node has been harsher again on all crops. Uh, Raptor has been tolerated by everything at 3 node except the TT canola and the chickpeas. But there was more of an effect on the conventional beans compared to the immunotolerant beans. Uh, the few ally treatments we have here have been very visual. Ally on its own at 5 node has significantly impacted all crops except the linseed. What's interesting about the linseed is that when MCPA is added to the mix, the linseed was stunted at first but has recovered now. That's interesting because it will be a fairly common brew for broadleaf weed control. There's a few group C's in here, which is mostly used as a pre-emergent herbicide for pulses. Something interesting has happened with turbine. Uh, it's completely controlled linseed, chickpeas and vetch at both rates used. If you're looking to control linseed, uh, which can be difficult to control, this might be a good choice. But the unexpected part was the chickpeas, which is on label PSP at the lower of the two rates. There was approximately 20 millimetres of rain in the week following application, and with the lighter soil type at this trial site, Perhaps a little bit too much active got into the crop row. Uh, it might just be one to be a bit cautious of with the PSPE. Anecdotally, SVS has used the same rate with chickpeas RBS at the same trial site with no issues. Turbine has obviously not affected the TT canola or the paper beans at either rate. Post-emergent treatments at third node, we've got simazine and metribuzin. The metribuzin has been quite harsh on all except canola and the simazine has caused next to no damage. Uh, Propizamide at both rates PSPE has not impacted the pulses, however the higher rate has caused some issues for the canola, so it's important to stick to the lower label rate for canola. The Group E of course is Ultro. It's a new pre-emergent to the market for pulses and is very strong on ryegrass. It is also quite good to have another group introduced into the system to save us overusing the Ds, Js and Ks for ryegrass control. Brodal or DFF on its own at 3 node 
hasn't actually done a lot of damage, but adding MCPA amine to the mix has caused an unreasonable amount of damage for the pulses. The addition of bromoxanol to DFF in Jaguar has caused significant crop damage, particularly canola, chickpeas and vetch. Sharpen is a pretty handy product for pulses pre-sowing, as it has no plant back, but we must remember that there's a six week plant back for canola, and for good reason, it is com completely controlled the canola post-sowing pre-emergent. Terrain, on the other hand, has pre-emergent suppression of a number of broadleaf weeds on the label. Reflex is a product coming to the market and is showing some promise to control wild radish, cape weed and other influential broadleaf weeds. You can see visually that there is no wild radish where we've applied reflex, and it's also controlled the canola and linseed 100%. Uh, this has been a brief summary of um, what we've done in this trial, uh, but it's important to remember that the environmental conditions can affect how these herbicides work, and even if it looked all right in the trial here, it may not be um, okay to use. So it's important to uh, stick to the label at all times. I hope that everyone saw something that was of interest and helps you learn something more about how your herbicides work. All of these treatments will have been scored by the end of the year and you'll be able to find those results in our results book. Uh, but if you want to get in touch with us sooner than that, we'll be having another follow-up Friday for AgriFocus soon. And uh, you can of course always contact us by email or Twitter.